Professor Bartholomew II. Introducing Professor Abby. This is the story of how ammonia shaped our world. So what is ammonia? Ammonia is made up of hydrogen and nitrogen, and the formula it creates is NH3. So ammonia has a is a colorless gas and it has a pungent smell to it. Interesting. So here's a molecular structure of ammonia. So it is a nitrogen atom, single bonded to three hydrogen atoms, and has a pair a lone pair of electrons. And here is the the molecular structure with its angles. And for its intermolecular forces, it has a dipole dipole um, interaction, and that is because of the pair of lone electrons. It makes it turn it turns it into a dipole dipole interaction. And here it's chemical properties. So its chemical name is azine, and it has a structure of NH3, which Professor Addy has already pointed out, and as you can see there on the screen, um, its appearance is a colorless glass, a colorless gas, which he has also pointed out, and it is quite reactive. And what that means as is that uh, when ammonia is around, or when ammonia is like heated to high temperatures, it will explode. So that's like what you might see in like a movie or something, or when you see like a an accident and chemistry, I don't know. Uh, so it has a density of 1.023 grams per mole and it has a molar mass of 17.03 grams per mole. And it is quite soluble. It is soluble in water, which is how you um, will make like cleaning products and etc. Um, it has a, its molecular shape is a triangular pyramid, as you can see here. Can you? Okay, so, it, it ha so it's organic functional groups. So ammonia is the most basic form of the functional group called amines. So here's ammonia, and here's the rest of the um, amines in the group. And here's a primary amine, a secondary amine, and a tertiary amine. Um, one of the most important properties of ammonia is that they are basic. And they are readily protonated, protonated to form ammonium cations, as shown below. So the history of ammonia. Uh, ammonia was discovered by Joseph Priestley in 1774. Um, this was he was discovered it by doing chemical research on air and identified that many of the gases within the air, um, that out of the many gases in the air, one of them was ammonia. Um, he his original term for ammonia was alkaline air, but later changed it to ammonia. A few years later, in 18 in 1785. Claude Louis Berthollet did research on ammonia and discovered that its elemental composition was, could be discovered through electric discharge. Yeah. So the Hayward Bosch process. So the air is composed of 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, and 1% of other gases such as argon or carbon dioxide. And although we have so much nitrogen in the air, we can't actually use it, at least not naturally. And because of that, many of the people during, before the Haber-Bosch process was invented didn't use the nitrogen in the air. So instead, they used natural fertilizers to get the ammonia they needed to grow like plants and like make their explosive weapons and etc. So the first, like the, the strongest fertilizer ever found was guano, which was found in some islands north of Peru. And after the guano ran out, people went towards Chilean nitrate, which was almost as good. And although there was still Chilean nitrate during the turn of the 18th century, people were still were starting to become worried about the future, and specifically the future of Germany, since it relied so much on the Chilean nitrate. So they started to wonder what if there was a war, and they blocked Germany from getting the Chilean nitrate. That would that would mean that Germany would have no weapons, and that its farmers where you have the, the fertilizer they needed to grow their crops for the country, which was result in mass starvation. So as uh, an important figure in the scientific community named Sir William Crookes gave a speech in which he talked about the importance of finding a uh, synthetic fertilizer, which the, world, which the world, and specifically Germany, could use in order to find, in order to preserve the, preserve the country's well-being. So the Haber-Bosch process continues. Um, so the first attempt to make ammonia was made by Wilhelm Osborne. 
which was an important figure in the scientific community as well. He tried doing this in 1900, and yeah. And although he failed, and by failed I mean he made very little ammonia, it was still a, a sign that people were trying. And five years later, Fritz Haber, a German Jew who was invested in science and wanted to become a German nationalist, uh, decided to try and make ammonia too. Although he failed as well, he did happen to make more at Oswald. And because of that, he decided to continue with his process. And little by little, he began to improve it until 1909 when he had successfully made enough ammonia, which meant that it could be produced industrially. That's when his partner, Haber, came in. I mean, that's when his partner, Bosch, came in, who worked at BASF and was able to perfect the process and make it as efficient as possible and to produce as much ammonia and as make as much money for the company. And after that, the war shortly started, and since the war started, um, they were going to need a lot more ammonia and, and nitrate-based products, so they hired the company to make another plant, which was called Lehrman. And, and after that, since then, more Germany has created more plants, and then other countries started creating plants as well. So here's ammonia and its various uses. Uh, so here is the first plant that I been, talked about earlier. So this plant was called Pau, which was the first plant created by BASF. And here you see that it's actually, um, there's a big crater, and that's because a silo that contained tons of ammonia exploded, and that's why the, the factory is not in service anymore, and why 500 people died and more than 2,000 people got injured. And here we see the other factory I was talking about, the one that was funded by the German government, which is called Lamu. And as you can see, it's actually still in, uh, uh, still in use today. Um, some other way that ways that ammonia was used was through fertilizer of the plants, in, as seen in here. Um, it was also used for cleaning products, such as this one below. And the way that ammonia is held is through tanks, such as this one, that is used to export to places all over the country. And here we see a rather famous picture which was the Oklahoma City bombing. And the, the way that, and the bomb that was used for the, the bombing was an ammonia bomb. It was a 7,000 pound bomb that contained 5,000 pounds of ammonia, which combusted with 2,000 pounds of other materials that made it um, highly explosive. So that's a bad way to use ammonia. So don't, mm -hmm. don't do that at home. Okay, so the importance of ammonia. Ammonia is an extremely important part of our world because it is a vital source of nitrogen that's used in order to ensure life for all plants. And it's also used in things such as making dyes, plastic, explosives, drugs, nitric acid, and ammonium hydroxide. Ammonia is created through the excretion by animals, and which, is, which I pointed out earlier with the guano from the islands north of Peru. And although this is a good uh, source of ammonia, it's a, it's a slow process and it takes years for enough ammonia to be produced, which is why the Haber-Bosch process is such a fundamental part to this world. Without the Haber-Bosch process, about one third of the human population would not exist right now. So yay, ammonia!